Hi guys, my name is Adam Smith. I am so honored to have been asked by the team at Trio Upward Bound at ARCC to help you kick off this truly unprecedented school year um, in a time that's really crazy. I wanna to try to provide you some normalcy, some motivation, and help you kick off the school year right. I grew up in the Twin Cities. I know these images scare you. These images are from Halloween. And I know you all know this. My mom used to tell me during Halloween, we would buy your costume three sizes too big so it could fit over your snowsuit, right? These images are from 1991, the famous blizzard way before your time of 1991, when all of Minnesota and the Twin Cities specifically got three feet of snow. Crazy, crazy images in 1991, and we'll come back to that because there was some crazy stuff that happened in my life. I said I grew up in the Twin Cities and often thought as a first-generation college student that success would be kind of like the image on the left, right? No dips, no turns, never really thought about where I was going or what I was going to do. Really, the only reason I went to college is because I was a football player. Right? I was blessed to be able to be recruited. My mom never had the time because she was working two or three jobs to support me and my sister. My stepdad wasn't really in the picture all the time because he was most of the time recovering and sometimes not recovering from drug and alcohol addiction. And so I was blessed to go to Drake University. When I got there, it was a whole different world. I had never dealt with some of the social stuff that was happening there. It was really a lot during this time of social and civic unrest in the late 80s or early 90s. And so for me, Drake just wasn't a fit. So I decided to transfer. I went to the University of Wisconsin in Eau Claire, just off the Chippewa River. And to be honest, I just had a good time. I didn't think about going to class. I had just had knee surgery, so I didn't think about playing ball. And so all I did was have a good time. And so Eau Claire did me a favor, to be honest. They said, you know what, Smith, we're going to force you to take some time off. So I had to move back home, back in with my family. Wasn't the safest place. Reminds me a lot of the things that some of our students are dealing with today. It's the last place I wanted to be. And so I decided I would work a job like regular people. So I drove a school bus. If you can imagine a 20-year-old being trusted driving a school bus of kids in Minneapolis. I drove a school bus during the day. And at night, I cleaned car dealerships. And that's how I did it, day after day after day. The picture is so interesting because that was the year that this blizzard happened. I was driving a school bus in the Twin Cities during this blizzard. And so I was blessed that I reached out to a pastor friend of mine who had contacts at Concordia University, just north of Milwaukee and Mequon. And he said, Adam, you know what? Um, we're going to talk to some guys and maybe get you in. I was like, sure. I, I just want to run away from, I don't want to run to anything. I want to run away from, not my family, really good people. They wanted a better life for me. I just didn't want their same life, their same challenges, their same struggles, their same uh, everything that was happening. So I decided to go. And the one thing I will tell you, as you're thinking about where to go to school, don't think about what's on the sweatshirt or how it looks to other people. It kind of reminds me of a time that my daughter was buying shoes for a homecoming dance. And I took her out shopping and she fell in love with this pair of shoes. It's going to match her dress just perfectly. But I knew they were half size too small. And I said, honey, these aren't going to fit. Well, they didn't last pair. I got to get them. I'll make them work. So guess what happened? She bought the shoes, went to the homecoming dance, and came home that night and guessed where the shoes were, right in her hand. No matter how pretty they looked, they just weren't a fit. So for me, it was all about finding fit, and Concordia University of Wisconsin was that fit for me. I went to Concordia, found a home, found community, decided I didn't want to play football because the school started to fulfill me as a student. I was a really involved student and community leader, and I really enjoyed it. After a couple of years, um, my advisor came to me in the fall and said, you're going to graduate this semester. I looked around and said, Who you, what, me? I'm going to graduate? He said, well, you need to go to the registrar's office and fill out graduation paperwork. I was like, all right, whatever. 
couple weeks passed. Of course, I didn't fill out the paperwork. I'm sitting in my advisor's class, Dr. Mashke, and he said to me, you didn't fill out that paperwork. I told you to fill it out for graduation. I said, Doc, I'm not going to graduate, man. See, I, I had finally seen myself as a college student. I didn't see myself as a college graduate. I didn't even imagine what that looked like or being a professional, what that looked like. So he said, come with me. Walk me down, we fill out the paperwork. Well, finally the days move on and graduation happens, commencement day. I'm sitting in the auditorium. My grandmother and my mom are there. The, the president finally calls my name and I go up to get my diploma. Dap him up, give him a hug. Yeah, man, take a picture, you know, with my folder. And then I go and sit down. Well, because I'm at the end of the alphabet, people start throwing their hats. A couple of people say to me, hey, you want to take a picture? Let's take a picture. So I take a picture with them, but I'm not really smiling. They say, what, what's wrong? Well, they didn't know that during the time when they were celebrating, I had looked in my folder for my diploma. I'm so first generation that they said, well, why are you so upset? And I said, you know, diploma in my thing. And I thought somebody got me. They got me on something, right? So at that point, they start laughing and they say, oh, no, no, no. You turn in your diploma to those ladies or your hat, cap and gown to those ladies over there. And once you turn it in, they will actually give you the diploma. Well, shoot, I made a beeline to those ladies. Gave them my cap and gown. And they said, are you sure? Honey, you might want to take a picture with your family and that kind of stuff. Oh, no, I need that diploma. And so I got it. And I was so proud because I was just an ordinary young person, that something extraordinary had happened in my life. Just like you, something extraordinary happened in your life. And for you, that extraordinary thing is being a part of TRIO, being a part of Upward Bound. If you don't know, Upward Bound was founded in 1965, during President Johnson's War on Poverty, the same time he passed the landmark voter rights act. There have been millions of students who have been a part of Upward Bound. Being from Minnesota, the one person I'll tell you is Prince, met Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, the famous producers, a part of Upward Bound Summer Program. So whether it's Prince or it's Oprah Winfrey or it's Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, the reality is Upward Bound is a program that is proven to help students get to and through college. So different from me, I was ordinary just like y'all, but I didn't get that extraordinary thing. So I had to stumble, fumble, bumble, drive a school bus, and luckily graduate from college. For you, it isn't about if you're going to go. It's about where you're going to go. It isn't about if you're going to graduate. It's about when you're going to graduate. It reminds me of my favorite superhero. My favorite superhero is a regular teenager. And I think one of the reasons I like him so much is I've spent my career working with young people, whether high school or college students. He was a regular teenager that something extraordinary happened to him. He stayed a regular teenager, but that extraordinary thing gave him superpowers and turned him into Spider-Man. Take a look at how this happened for Peter Parker. Hey, uh, can I take your picture? I need one with a student in it. Sure, yeah. Great. Where do you want me? Oh, over here? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Don't make me look ugly. <laughs> that's impossible. <clears throat> ah, perfect. Great. That's great. <laughs> MJ, let's go. Wait. Thanks.
Parker. So you didn't think as ordinary students that you would come to a presentation and hear that you've been given superpowers. But how cool, right? You've been given superpowers today and your biggest superpower you've been given, that spider bite, was being a part of ARCC's Upward Bound program and the fraternity that is Upward Bound. Those superpowers, I know deep down you're still an ordinary young person. But you've been given some extraordinary superpowers to do extraordinary things. One of those extraordinary things is to earn more. We all like to get that paper, right? So you're going to have an opportunity to earn over a million dollars a year over your lifetime more than someone who doesn't have a college degree. It isn't about just providing for your needs. It's also maybe you'll be able to get some wants. And the chance to earn more also gives you an opportunity to bless other people, to bless your community, to bless your family, to make a bigger impact on people's lives because you're gonna have the opportunity to earn more. That superpower is also giving you the ability to serve more. This is the same foot washing picture that sat in my pastor's office and he had underneath the phrase, foot washing done here. And one day I asked him, pastor, what is it with foot washing? And he said to me, you know what? In the Middle East, washing someone's feet, because their feet were exposed wearing sandals, their feet were exposed to the dirt and the dust and the mud and the manure, washing someone's feet was a true symbol of humility. You have the opportunity to wash other people's feet, to serve other people, to make a difference in other people's lives. Of course, if you don't have a college degree, you can serve more, but you can serve more people with a college degree. So the superpower, that spider bite, in keep being a part of TRIO and being a part of Upward Bound is giving you the ability to serve more, giving you the ability to earn more and also the ability to lead more. Here's a picture of Coach Saban. I was lucky to spend two or three years at the University of Alabama. And Coach Saban was well known or is well known for his focus on the process. All great coaches, all great leaders, all great educators, all great trio upward bound staff think every time the players win, it's all about them. Every time they lose, it's all about me. That's what your parents think. Every time my kids are wonderful and they do great things, oh, look how great her kids are. Every time your kids mess up, what is wrong with her parents? That's the opportunity you have. You have the opportunity to lead more. Not just lead more people, but lead more often because you have the chance to serve more and to earn more. Leadership is the next gift that you've been given in superpower. The final is the ability to impact. They all kind of tie together, right? I didn't think when I walked across that stage in 1994, I maybe thought that I would earn more. But I never thought about the blessing of being able to impact other people's lives. As a former Upward Bound director, I look back on my, my students and I see now as adults, they're doctors, they're teachers, they're educators, but more than everything, anything, they're servants. And so the ripple effect of me getting that degree has not only benefited my life, but benefited the lives of others. One piece of data I heard once was, if you are someone like you and I, whose parents didn't go to college, your chances of going and graduating are one in a hundred. If you graduate, your children's chances are now one in four, 25%. If you get a graduate degree or a professional degree like law or medicine, your children's chances of graduate, graduating are one in two, 50%. My wife and I are both the first in our family to go to college and to graduate from college. Both of our daughters have multiple graduate degrees. That's crazy. So you have the ability not only to impact your life, in your family's lives, in your children, in your grandchildren's lives, but you have the ability to impact the lives of others because those ripple effects go long after you're not here. Finally, you have the ability to succeed more. 
It's a great quote here from Winston Churchill who said, success is walking from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. A great coach of mine once said, you, you either win or you have an opportunity to grow. There's no losses, there's just opportunities. And so having the opportunities to succeed more is really the biggest blessing, but success is measured not only from your earning and your serving, but your leadership and your impact. Finally, Peter Parker's uncle, Uncle Ben, not the Rice Uncle Ben, but Uncle Ben the uncle, reminded Peter with great power, with this gift that he's been given, just like the gift you've been given in being a part of Trio Upper Bound, with great power comes great responsibility. You have a responsibility now to reach back, to help out. There may be students at Cambridge High School who are not a part of Trio Upper Bound. There may be people in your family who are not a part of Upward Bound that you now are paving the way for. Being from Minnesota, I love my Vikings. C.J. Ham's job is to lead the way through the hole. And Dalvin Cook's job is to run off his back. That's your opportunity to be that blocking back, not only for yourself, but for the lives of others. Now, I'm sure you're asking, Adam, this is a lot, man. I'm dealing with coronavirus. I am dealing with not having internet. I can't see my friends. Homecoming isn't the same. It's hard to take this test. Virtual learning isn't my favorite thing. My family is struggling economically, financially, emotionally, spiritually. How do I even do this? How do I even achieve success? I get that I have superpowers that I'm a part of Upper Bound. And I get that I'm going to get all these great things. But this is a lot. It's a long way to November, let alone to when I graduate from high school and go to college. One of the best quotes I ever heard is one of those t-shirt quotes. Oregon, the University of Oregon, has on their shirts, win the day. It's all about winning today. And there'll be many days you don't win. The goal is, is to win more days than you lose, right? And to take the losses as opportunities to grow and to get better. One of the my kids' favorite books and favorite movies is, is called Matilda. And there's a great way and a great scene in the book and the movie that really summarized the way to attack this goal that you have and this goal that I have. It involves this young man, his name is Bruce. Here's Bruce. So all the kids in the, in the book and in the movie are sitting in the auditorium and they're sitting there not knowing what's gonna happen. Their principal, the Trunchbull, Miss Trunchbull comes out on the stage and she's this former German shot putter, real scary. She is not the nicest to the kids. She puts them in a place called the Chokey. She even throws them around like shot puts and, and hammer throws. And she comes up on the stage and the kids are wondering what's going on. And she says, someone's been eating my cake. And the kids all look around. Last thing we're gonna do is mess with the Trunchbull's cake. Bruce Baumgartner, she says, and the camera immediately pans to Bruce. And Bruce looks around and, I, I don't need your cake. And she says, Bruce, come on up on the stage. Well, Bruce walks up on the stage, and Miss Trunchbull has a plate sitting next to her with one of those silver domes, like on chop. And she lifts the silver dome up, and there's this beautiful piece of chocolate cake. And she says, Bruce, would you like a piece? And Bruce says, sure. Now, the rest of the kids know this is a setup. Don't do it, Bruce. But Bruce can't help himself. So he begins to eat the cake. Before you know it, he's done, and he's uh, icing on his face, and he's licking his little sausage fingers. And the trunchbull says, was it good? Mm-hmm, Bruce, he says. Well, God, Bruce, this cookie has something else for you. And the cook comes walking, pushing this cart, and there's flies following the cook. And she's pushing this cart, and on the cart is a, another cake that's as big as a tractor truck tire with one slice cut out. And she says, now, Bruce, you either finish the rest of this cake or you're going to spend the rest of the week in the chokey. And the kids gasp, oh, not the chokey. And this cake is huge. How is this 
even going to happen with Bruce. But Bruce attacks the cake just like you're going to attack virtual learning, just your, how you're going to attack success. He attacks the cake one bite at a time, one step at a time. And even this tractor truck tire sized cake starts to get smaller. One step, one choice, one decision, one bite at a time. Well, before you know it, there's only about a third of the cake left. But Bruce has had it. His stomach is full. The kids in the front row hear his stomach rumbling and he's going to blow. They start freaking out. And Bruce can't eat anymore. And he's looking around and he's just exhausted. And way in the back, he hears a voice that says, you can do it, Bruce. Then another kid, yeah, Bruce, you can do it. Bruce, you can do it. And immediately all the kids start to chant, Bruce, 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 Bruce. Well, that gives him the motivation he needs. So Bruce finishes the cake, licks the tray, and the cake is on, flips it upside down, and shows it the trunk, and the kid goes, yeah, you did it, Bruce. That's really what success is about. Success is about attacking every goal, every choice, every decision, every process, one bite, one choice at a time. Despite the superpowers, despite being extraordinary, extraordinary things happening to you, one choice at a time. And then more than anything, surrounding yourself with people who are gonna chant your name, people who are gonna support you. I don't mean literally chanting your name, because that'd be real awkward. But people that are gonna say, you can do it. Remember your goals. Hey, I got you. Hey, that's just an opportunity to get better. People with that growth mindset people that are going in the same direction, people that have went to college. A good buddy of mine said, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Surrounding yourself with people who are going in the same direction that you are. That's how you do it. That's how you achieve it. We know that this is gonna be a really tough semester for you. We know that it's gonna be challenging. We also know that you've been blessed. You've been blessed to be a part of a program that has given you superpowers to succeed in things and to achieve things beyond your wildest dreams. All you have to do is attack it one step, one choice, one bite at a time. And then surround yourself with people that are going to support you, with like-minded folks. Lean in to Lauren, lean into the program, and they will support you. And be that for other people. It won't be about if, it'll be about when. I encourage you to stay safe, to stay, to stay healthy, and to be there for each other for a great fall 2020. Thank you so much, and God bless.